and welcome to Kentucky Brew Reviews. I'm Special K, and this is another store beer and booze hunting video. Uh, we are at the Liquor Barn in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. It's about 45 minutes to an hour from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so the first section here is we've got some gift baskets for the holidays. Um, they had some cool stuff in them, a lot of local stuff, but they were really, really expensive. So, um, you know, if you're trying to get a gift in a hurry, you know, it's not bad, but you could probably buy the stuff individually cheaper than buying the basket as a whole. Um, they actually have a humidor at this location, um, so they have a lot of cigars and stuff. I didn't go in the humidor. I don't really smoke cigars, but uh, some of the other guys on the show do. Um, they did have a pretty big wine section, um, but I didn't really check it out. Uh, I didn't shoot too much of this video because this video is going to be really long. I did, however, cover all the alcohol and beer very closely. So, got some Tito's for fifteen ninety eight. It's a pretty good price. Um, Tito's is normally about seventeen or eighteen dollars. Um, some Evan at one point seven five. That was actually kind of a high price, twenty two bucks. It was actually the same price as the gym, right there. And twenty two bucks uh, for gym isn't too bad, but twenty two for Evan is a little expensive. Um, I think I paid like sixteen dollars for a one point seven five of Evan a few uh, Black Fridays ago. Um, got some Maker's Mark, uh, single barrels, and small batch. Some tequila, I've never heard a lot of those. Um, some bullet there at the top. Uh, and some Patron. I'm not sure which Patron that was, but we got some small barrels select down there in Op Creek. Love to get my hands on that. It's just a little pricey. Um, some Rising Creek, I've been seeing this a lot, um, but I haven't really tried their whiskey. Same with the Flatboat. I see Flatboat stuff around a lot, but tend to see big huge uh, in caps and stuff of it but i never see anybody buying it um you know maybe it's just not that great uh, maybe one day we'll get it when i can find it for the right price but at 40 bucks uh, a little steep some more flat boat there haven't heard of that godet now we're on to some of the uh the refrigerated section here we have some monaco's and some other co cocktails. There's a sparkling tequila, blood orange. Never heard of that brand before. Um, Volley. There's some Bud Light Seltzers. There's the Cactus. The usual White Claws and Trulies. Um, some High Noon Sun Sips there. There's a Cuervo. Um, Jose Cuervo uh, canned cocktail, which seemed pretty interesting. We'll have to do it on the show at some point. Um, oh, there's some Hornitos ones up there. Saul. Um, there's some kind of, uh, what's that? tea lemonade and tea vodka in a bag um that would probably be a cool thing to do for a stream there's that that hornitos tequila seltzer a little pricey at 13 dollars. you know 12.49 for a four pack um that's one of the reasons i didn't pick it up you know that's a lot for a four pack if it's a six pack i wouldn't feel as bad paying that much but some more trulies um so this is interesting right here. Uh, spike your own seltzer. Um, they're advertising you to add more alcohol to your already alcoholic seltzer. I mean, if you want to go big, go for it, I guess. Some mild basin seltzers. They were okay if you're looking for a craft seltzer. Uh, some mighty swill down there. I see those everywhere. So, uh, there's some Kona Brewing beer right there. Some truly popsicles. So this video was shot uh, like the end of, uh, or sorry, mid October. Um, so you might see some Oktoberfest and stuff in here. Um, it just took me a while to do the uh, voiceover and to edit all the content because it's a lot to uh, edit one of these videos. Some seltzers, or not seltzers, but there were some uh, ciders down there, pretty small section. Um, Twisted tea, some Seagram's right there. Uh, Boulder Rock, which we've been seeing a lot more here in Kentucky. They mostly make ciders. There's some Ace Cider. Um, some more seltzers. Frizzy Co. They're supposed to be an organic seltzer, I believe. Uh, I you know, wasn't interested. We did pick up uh, this Tangray Gin and Tonic right here. I wish I would have picked up the other flavors because it was actually one of the best uh, canned cocktails I've had in a long time. We gave it like a 9 on the show. Some Great Lakes. Brewing. There's some more sycamore stuff. Like I said, it's been popping up uh, pretty frequently here in Kentucky. It's Voodoo Ranger, Samuel Adams. Uh, 
Um, actually was able to shoot a lot in this store. Um, I actually got here really, really early, like right when they opened. Um, normally I have a hard time getting around the store because there's a lot of people around and, you know, people are watching you. Um, some of the uh, store owners and the employees, like, don't like you shooting in the area. Um, they seem there wasn't enough people here to really watch me, though I did see one guy uh, follow me around for a minute because I think he was just curious of what I was doing. Um, generally, when people start following me, I just pretend I'm on FaceTime or something. That way they uh, leave me alone. It generally works. And that was my dog. Pecan Abita. Masagave seltzers, which are some of the best seltzers in the market if you're into it. They were really pushing this round over Matter Beer. They had it on a bunch of end caps and six packs and 12 packs all over the place. Um, I didn't get it. I, I can't remember. I couldn't remember at the time, and I still don't remember if we've reviewed it on the show. It looked familiar to me, but uh, I couldn't remember. So there's some double two hearted. The, the regular two hearted, in my opinion, is better than the double. I mean, it, the double's good, but the regular's better. Nineteen ninety nine for some K, uh, breakfast out KBS there. It's not too bad. There's some strawberry dream. Some of these beers I haven't heard of. Some Oscar Blues. It's Evil Twin right there. More Great Lake stuff. Some Brewdog. Going on to the local stuff, there's some Goodwood, um, there's some Rheingeist, or I guess regionally local, Rheingeist is uh, Ohio, and then uh, High Wires, North Carolina. Mile Wide is local to Louisville. I don't know where Mad Tree is. It's Kentucky Ale, that's the Alltech company. These were really cool, uh, these Paul Inner Oktoberfest uh, beer glasses. There is a Barrel Age Great, uh, Great Lakes Christmas Ale on there. We reviewed their base of the Christmas Ale. A barrel H one sounds pretty interesting. Some Flying Dog beers. Some more Oktoberfest. You know, it's disappointing. Like, stores like this, you think they would, like, clearance out their Oktoberfest. No, they'll just sit on the shelf, and nobody will buy them, and then they'll expire and throw them away instead of, like, marketing, you know, marketing them down to a reasonable price to people to buy them out. Some Viking Blood. They do do growler fills here. This is the growler fill counter. Uh, looks like they have some high wire over there. A lot of fruited beers. Um, a few local things. I don't... Their growler fills at Liquor Barn are pretty high in price. So generally I don't get them filled here. Uh, the best stations, at least I, uh, the best place I've found to get growler fills uh, in Kentucky are generally like gas stations. We have something called a Mapco gas station that are really good places to get them filled. They generally are $10 or less to fill up a, a full-size growler. Um, or you go to the brewery itself, but Liquor Barn's always been really, really high-priced. On to the domestic section here. Looking pretty empty. Uh, like I said, this was um, pretty close to Halloween, if I remember correctly, when I shot this. So Some uh, Bud Light Slush, Lemonade Slush. I did pick that up, and... Uh, get to review it it's been sitting in my freezer for a little bit we'll have to do it i guess i guess we'll review it soon and post it during the summer they want it 20.99 for a 30 pack of rolling rock which is a little high um you know their prices on bud light and stuff are actually kind of high too the thing with Liquor Barn is, um, I like shopping there because they do have a generally a good selection, um, but the prices are always around a dollar to all the way to seven dollars higher than like a total wine. Um, but they do price match frequently, so um, one thing I'll do is pull up Total Wine's website when I'm shopping at uh, Liquor Barn so I can uh, get it for the lowest price. Um, there's only like two Total Wines in our state, and they're really inconvenient for me to go to. Um, but liquor barns are everywhere. There's like, you know, 20 of them. So, um, the convenience factor alone, it's worth going to, especially since they price match. It's a German beer section here. So Carlsberg 
and uh, Bitburger right there. Still got their Fest beer out. I'm, at some point, we'll get more into these German beers, but uh, it's, it's all about the uh, time and money. I've been seeing that uh, Pincus beer everywhere. I feel like at the at time of shooting this and our last uh, store video, I saw it probably at like four or five places, and I'd never seen it at all before. Estrella Dime, it's actually a pretty good beer. We did that one in um, North Carolina early on into the show. We actually did it, I mean, right now we're sitting in a tent, and we reviewed that beer. I don't know if that video is even still up. If it is, I'll try to put a link in the uh, description. Some Schuffelhofer right there. We uh, reviewed those not too long ago. Again, it's looking pretty slim down there. Some Paulina Gritfurt Rattlers in 16-ounce cans, which is nice to see because a lot of those German beers skunk pretty easy, so it's nice to uh, see that they have those in cans. On to the refrigerated section. Um, they had a lot of stuff that you've already seen in here, but they do have, you know, ready-to-go um, cold, 6-packs, 12-packs, and, you know, 30s. Picking up some uh, Killian's Irish Red here. Killian's used to be available at all the grocery stores, but now it's hard to find. As you saw there on the door there, they said they do kegs. Um, you can buy a keg from this store, and most liquor barns will do that, but the problem is they only sell Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, and then they might have one craft beer. Um, it's best to like go to Total Wine or go to a brewery to get a uh, keg. They're gonna, generally going to be cheaper, and they're going to have a higher selection. Um, also, Liquor Barn does not uh, order kegs. You can go to... Uh, total wine and put a custom order in for just about any keg that uh, they'll deal with and you can get it from there so i don't buy kegs from uh liquor barn some yingling up there i wish we got more yingling products we generally only get the black and tan um the flight uh the regular lager and the light we don't really get any of the other stuff like the lord chesterfield and uh, some of their other beers More high wire stuff. There's some uh, three Floyds up there. Pretty large selection of three Floyds. Some Fathead. Oh my gang. Some Breckenridge down there at the bottom. Some some Hazy. There's some Imperial Starfocker. We just put that review out from Stone. Some Shipyard. Still got a pumpkin beer sitting there. I see. Good section of bells right there. There's your founder stuff. That's pretty funny. The uh, they have a bigger section of bells than they do uh, Sierra Nevada. And actually, Great Lakes too. They have a bigger selection of Great Lakes than Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada had one tiny little shelf. Some reds. You notice this is a sadder section here. It's pretty pretty sad. If you would have been in this store three or four years ago before the seltzer craze hit, there would have been a huge, a huge uh, sadder section. Uh, but now it's taken up by seltzers. I will say they did have a huge selection of seltzers, but um, with the exception of like you know your basic ones like White Claw and Truly, um, they were pretty well stocked. Like nobody was actually buying them. They were only buying the the uh, Trulies and whatnot. Got some more Alco Pops right here, these Popsicles. I'm not really into them. I didn't know they did these. The Jack Daniels Tennessee Apple Crafted Cocktail right there. That would probably be a pretty good one to try. These are the cocktail mixes. I believe most of these have alcohol in them. Uh, Cuervo and UV and Sky. Some Long Island... Uh, Iced tea there, Chichi's Pina Colada, some mudslides down there. My wife's a big fan of the mudslides and the Pina Coladas. Some Jim Beam Classic Cocktails, High Noon Sun Sips. Here's the alcoholic uh, beverages. Um, so not like the malt beverages, these actually are uh, mixed drinks made with alcohol instead of uh, being fermented like a uh, beer. Some more of those Cuervos right there. 
some canteen vodka sodas. Haven't had those before. Really pushing those sun sips there. There's a Bombay Sapphire Gin and Tonic. Some pre-made shots down there. Uh, from my experience, those are never good. Got some uh, Lindemann's Lambics right there. They didn't have a huge Lambic section at this store. Buzz Ball, large Buzz Balls. I don't know anybody who actually likes Buzz Balls. Um, the few people that I've talked to that drink them or tolerate them are like under 25. Like they have this weird tar flavor. I don't. I don't understand the appeal of those. And they're expensive. Like that one is almost five dollars for, you know, a 12 ounce can. So this liquor barn overall was like it's really really nice liquor barn. I have a few issues with it though. Uh, they don't have a single section. So a lot of liquor barns have single sections. When you have a liquor store this big, you almost have to have a, a single beer section because they have so much beer. Like it would be difficult for me to try all of them. So you know, if I don't want to pay twelve dollars per six pack to try you know four different beers, I just want to get a single of each one to see if I like it. Now in the tequila section here, I saw some Jose uh, traditional up there. Uh, we actually picked up a bottle of that a while back. We just haven't got around to reviewing. There's Humidor tequila right there. Some 1800. Some more Cuervo. Ugh, not a big fan of Cuervo. Tequila is one of those things that uh, you can't really skip on the price. Like, you know, you got Benchmark for bourbon, and you got some, you know, good budget vodkas out there. But tequila, there might be one or two that are passable in the cheap range, but it's barely... Like, look at this one. This one's called Tortilla Tequila. Like, did they even try on that one? Like, really? But yeah, you got to spend at least uh, 35 bucks to get a decent bottle of tequila. Um, it's just how it is. And, uh, you know, it depends on what you're getting. Me, personally, I prefer a Silver Tequila or Blanco Tequila. I'm not a big fan of the aged stuff. I can do some of the lightly aged stuff, but the really, really... Uh, Really aged stuff. I think it tastes uh, a little uh, too ashy for me. I do like that these uh, liquor barns have staff picks. So if there's a tequila, uh, the people working there like a lot, they'll put like a staff pick note on it. Or if it's like a highly rated tequila or alcohol, they'll put a... Uh, a little sticker on it saying so. There's some number one extra aged, $115. Whoo! The, um, we had the silver on the show, and I think we paid like almost $50 a bottle for it, and it wasn't anything to write home about. I mean, it was good, it just wasn't great. Here's uh, some rum over here. You got Goslings and Don Q right there. They got the Goslings on the bottom shelf. That's not a bottom shelf rum. Got some Bamboo up there. Captain Morgan. Black. Some Admiral Nelson down there. Mm -mm -mm, Admiral Nelson. Rondez. Uh, it's tolerable if you're mixing it. Um, a lot, a lot of captain. They had a huge section of captain. The Rondes coconut isn't bad at all, actually. I would argue that the uh, spice Rondes is the only rough one. Some flavored Captain Morgans. There was the orange there. This one looked pretty interesting. That Bacardi bottle. It's like Bacardi Rare. I think it was like thirty-ish bucks. Thought about picking it up, but. I didn't know anything about it, um, so I didn't. But I might go back there and get it at some point. Malibu, some Cruzan up there. Cruzan is, uh, if I'm going cheap, is probably my cheap rum of choice. For mixing, that is. I don't really, don't really sip the rum too often. My wife drinks a lot of rum. Some bush now and some Wheatley vodka over there. Now we're going into the gin and vodka section here. Um, there's some Taka gin down there at the bottom. Yummy, yummy. Good old five ninety nine bottle of gin. Some Bombay there. This 
Seagram's Distillers Reserve Gin. If you're going to go cheap gin, um, $21 for a 1.75 is pretty good. Though, uh, I believe I've most places have it for about $19.99 for a 1.75, and it's like 10 or 11 bucks for a fifth. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a cheap, high-quality gin. It's much better than the regular um, Seagram's gin. It's be- yeah, I think the regular one's maybe like two, three dollars cheaper. It's I would spend the money and get the uh, Distillers Reserve for sure. Some aviation gin, some more Tito's right there. Three olives is a vodka that we've been trying to get to, haven't got around to it yet. Same with that platinum, um, Jephthah Creed there. That is a local. Um, distillery that makes uh, mostly makes vodka but they do have a few bourbons but they're not really uh, old enough to have a lot of bourbon bourbon takes a long time and they didn't want to um, I talked to the owner a while back they didn't want to source any of their uh, alcohol out they wanted to make it so they grow their own corn on property and grow all their grains on property and they make their vodka and spirits on property too they just haven't had uh, they haven't been around long enough to you know age a bourbon so they have a lot of vodka and young whiskey and bourbon Vodka ready to drink. I saw that one. That's a relatively new one. Some bacon vodka. Mm-mm. Gotta make bacon flavored everything for some reason. Some Ciroc. I was surprised to see Ciroc out on the shelves. Uh, a lot of places keep the Ciroc in Hennessy and a lot of the um, more high end celebrity endorsed products behind shelves because, you know, people are thieves. Um, got some Sky Vodka here. Some Finlandia flavors, which I see very rarely here in Kentucky. There's some New Amsterdam orange, which I don't think we've reviewed. I just thought that was the mango for some reason. I'm just now seeing that it was the uh, orange in this video. Good old Nikolai. When you don't have any money. Svetka, some Pink Whitney, and more New Amsterdam. So much Nikolai. Look how far that Nikolai goes. Oh, you can't forget the boxed vodka. If you're a fan of boxed wine, you're going to love Nikolai boxed vodka. Smirnoff up there, all the flavors, some Pinnacle, UV. Copper Creek, which is absolutely awful. I don't know if that's like their house brand or not. Uh, let me know in the uh, comments down below if anybody else gets Copper Creek that does not live in Kentucky. But I'm not sure. I'm, I've only ever seen it at uh, liquor barns. I haven't seen it at any other stores, at least uh, around us. Some Jack Daniels there. Maker's Mark. Elijah Craig, great stuff. Elijah Craig's awesome. Some old Barstown, also really pretty solid bourbon. Uh, Makers 101, some Ancient Age. They don't have the Very Ancient Age. That's a hard one. Very old. I think it's like Very Ancient Age or Very Old. Ancient Age is a pretty rare one. Wasn't a fan of just the regular Ancient Age. Some Woodfruit there. Some more Knob Creek. Some Bourbon Ready to Drink. Again, I've never heard of that company. Uh, I haven't seen it in Louisville specifically. Like I said, we're outside of Louisville, but might have to give that one a try at some point. It seems not awfully priced. At least the vodka wasn't. Four Roses. Some Rives over there. Some new Riff. New Riffs, eh. A lot of people like it. I'm not a big fan. Same with Barshine Bourbon Company. Those nice bottles at the top. They're a relatively young distiller, and they do a lot of contract distilling. Um, the Barshine Bourbon Company. So they make a lot of, like, uh, they do a lot of, like, vodkas and, like, aged stuff. Or not aged stuff, but the flavored stuff. Uh, in their own bourbon, again, they haven't been around that long. It, they charge a lot of money for very young bourbon. Uh, we went there on a tour they want to charge like 90, 90, 90 or hundred dollars for some, um, you know, five year bourbon, and it's not, it's not that great. I mean, it's not awful by any means. It's just way too expensive for what they're asking. 
Some bullet right there. Never heard of Old Soul. Never seen that one. There's some Uncle Nearest. People have been asking about that. It's on the list, guys. We just uh, it's got to have the uh, right price and got to see it at the right time. Here are all the benchmarks. So they have the bonded top floor, um, single barrel, and a few other ones. Then they just put these out when I came back here um, to this liquor barn. Um, picked them up in Louisville. You cannot pick them up at all, and they are very, very hard to come by right now. Um, but if you do see it, I'd highly recommend getting the uh, top floor or the bonded. Those are definitely worth the money. Uh, and don't pay over twenty-three-ish dollars for like the top floor or bonded, because um, then they're just like price gouging. I know some places. I uh, radar's been talking about it. Uh, look, small liquor stores are trying to charge fifty and sixty dollars for a you know twenty-dollar bottle of bourbon, which is insane. Good old early times. Some Jim Beam. Basil Hayden's up there. Evan Williams 100 proof. Delicious whiskey and spices. I don't know if that was trying to be a like a Southern Comfort where it's like an imitation whiskey or it's whiskey and they're just adding other stuff to it. Flatboat, like I said, that stuff is absolutely everywhere in the store and most liquor barns have them. Some Canadian Club 9 year. Um, that Seagram's Dark Honey I have not seen before. Um, Seagram 7 is fine if you're going to mix it. Um, it's just not a, I don't think I'd sip on the stuff, but you know it works for a cheap mixer. Good old Fireball everywhere. from Heaven Hill. Not a huge fan of the Heaven Hill or the Kessler there. Saw a lot of the Canadian stuff. So Crown Royal, they're, they were a little steep on their prices for Crown Royal. Black Velvet, Canadian Hunter down there. Canadian Hunter is pretty rough, so is uh, the Northern Lights. Some Proper 12, we're on to some of the Scotch here. Jameson, there's Jameson Culper, and then Black Barrel. We haven't not done a Black Barrel. Wish I would have picked a bottle up. It's the McAllen. Some Johnny Walker Black Label with some balls. If you need some balls with your whiskey. Oh, that's some dusty bottles right there. So they didn't have a lot of that was like the only Japanese whiskey they actually had in the store. What is that? Vat sixty nine gold. That looks absolutely awful, and I did not see that when I was here or shooting this. I might have to go back and pick that up just to torture radar. There's their Hennessy right here. This is some of their higher end stuff in their case. I don't know what that is. I see it everywhere and I still don't know what that is. Single malt scotch up there. That right there is a $4,200 bottle of cognac. So if you're interested or you'd like to buy the show a $4,200 bottle of cognac, we're, we're down. I can't believe they had the Don in here, Don Julio in the ca a case. Some blue label Johnny Walker, which I definitely want a bottle at some point. Yeah, the Johnny Walker blue label is a big one in this case. Uh, Kentucky Par, you'll see that in here in a minute. That's another one I really want to get my hands on. Um, right there, is, there's the Kentucky Par. Yeah, and some Whistle Pig. I'd really want to do a Whistle Pig review, but maybe in 2022. That's the plan. On to the cream liqueurs and the schnapps. Um, just a lot of Baileys. There's some Bamboo. Um, cream Rum, the Old Smoky Cream, which I don't think we've had on the show. Um, a lot of Limoncello right there. 
some amaretto, um, some of that bourbon cream, that Jim Beam cream. It's good stuff right there. One of the best bourbon creams on the market, and re most reasonably priced for sure. Some triple sec, peppermint schnapps, more firebox. Everybody needs all the fireball. It needs to be in five sections of the store. Um, that was a different, interesting one. That was matcha cream. A uh, little pricey. I thought of picking up, but not for thirty one dollars. Ninety nine products. You know what you're getting when you're buying ninety nine. You're trying to get drunk real fast, and you don't care what it tastes like. Some Jaeger, Jim Beam, honey right there, some more schnapps. Well, I hope you guys uh, liked this video. Um, don't forget to subscribe and um, leave comments down below. And I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys in 2022 with our first stream in January. Later.